to point. Today we are going to focus on the two different addresses that are used um, to distribute, to maintain routing information between the neighbors. There are two addresses. The addresses are 224.006 and 224.005. 224.006 and 5, these two multicast addresses are involved in distributing and maintaining the router information, route information on each router. Uh, for example, if you have a point-to-point -point network, there's only two routers. There's no DR, BDR. In such occasion, in such cases, you don't need six address. Anything that is sent to this address will be received by the other member, other neighbors. See, I'm talking about point-to-point. When we have point to point, uh, in this link, there is only two participants. Likewise, in this link, there's also a point to point link, there's only two participants, only two. So you no need the address that is given for DRs because you don't have DRs. When R1 wants to send an update in this direction, it will use 224005. <clears throat> like this, this also will use dot five. So only person that will receive the update that is sent this direction is R2. No one else possible. Likewise, anything sent on this direction is received only by R3. No one else can receive it. But when we have multiple routers in the same broadcast domain, see this one, this, what does this mean? This means a LAN, it means a switch. That's what this means. This means a, a layer two broadcast domain, meaning this, this all four devices are in same broadcast domain. Uh, they can be they can be in same VLAN or they can be in same physical switch. So even in physical switch, there is only one VLAN called VLAN one. So th which means they're all in same local area network. <coughs> in that case, to avoid duplication, to avoid loop, there is a DR elected. And there is also BDR elected. Let's say we have another router here. BDR elected. So we know the election process. First, it will it will check the priority. The one with the higher priority will first declare itself as BDR. Repeat again. I'm repeating again. The one with the higher priority will declare itself as BDR. Let's say this one has got 5.5.5.5. This has got 4.4.4.4. This has got 3.3.3.3. 1.1.1.1.1. 2.2.2.2. .2 as the router ID. And the priority on this link I have given as 254. The priority on this link I have not given anything, so the default is 1. The priority is 1 here, the priority is 1 here, the priority is 1 here. So not here, here. The priority is 1 here. <coughs> now, when the hello packets are exchanged, this router realizes that I'm eligible to be a BDR, yeah, first BDR, that's how it will, 
it it will say okay i'm bdr because i i see myself having sorry not five five I, i see myself having the bigger priority no one else Hmm. No, uh, sorry for that. Uh, it's not right. Um, the priority, the bigger number, has got bigger weightage. There is no opposite of it. For in 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 OSPF, in OSPF, this is how it is. See, in some other features like. for example rsvp mpls rsvp in which the lower number is high weightage 7 or 1 1 is high likewise in spanning tree lower is high weightage but in ospf <clears throat> higher the number i have the weightage so now what happens is the, the this router because it has got the high priority the big number it says i am a bdr first it will declare itself as bdr and when no one objects this will say hey now i am a dr because no one has got a uh, bigger priority than me because no one has got the bigger one like me i promote myself to be a designated router so in simple word what i need to say is there is no direct election for dr it's always from bdr to dr it is always a promotion given bdr is directly selected by comparing the priorities the router with the pri higher priority will first declare itself as bdr bdr is what selected through election after which when there is no other router found with higher priority this will promote itself to be a dr designated router fine this is a designated router because of the high priority the other routers will compare their priority but their priority is a tie 1 1 1 1 in all four that that's the default priority on a ethernet ospf running interface now <clears throat> ospf priority is 1 there is a tie so they compare the router id and now this router is a claim it's bdr posting and it is becoming bdr after observing that there is no one else have got higher priority so this is now declared as bdr and there is a dr now when we when we say this we'll say this together it's a dr family that's why we say drs you will not have more than one dr i tell you again you will not have more than one dr but the bdr is what we call it as drs bdr and dr together bdr and dr together we call it as drs right now whenever a change happened what the router did is what it used to do is it sends the update to drs only it will notify the change to the drs so don't get misguided with the word all which means it doesn't mean that we have too many dr only one dr for one lan segment and only one only one bdr And one dr so they are together called as drs so notification is sent to both that is what it means it, a notification is sent to both dr and dr 
about this change in the link state. We see that the notification is not sent to router B, not sent to router C as well. It is not sent to router B and C. The notification goes only to DRs. So now BDR and DR knows about the change. Now DR's job is to give to others. So there is C, there is B. You may be having more also. So to, to send it in a easy way, it uses this multi-guest address 224.0.0.5. Anything that is sent to this address will go to every other router, repeating again. When we say other router, I mean routers other than DRs. They're all called as other routers. So DR will use 224.0.0.5 to notify others. Router A notifies to DRs using 224.0.0.6 and DRs uses 224.0.0.5 to notify this information to others. Now why do we need this? Why can't A directly use 224.0.0.5? See, if you don't have these two address, let's, uh, let's pretend that we, we don't have this address. then there is no point of having DRBDR. If you don't have DRBDR, what will happen, you know? This one sends the update to 224.0.0.5 by putting its own router ID. The routers that receives the update, they won't just keep it for themselves. After synchronizing their database, they will forward it to others. So already C has learned, D has learned when B learned it. But B also sends the same update and C also sends the same update because anything that they receive, you know, they don't keep it for themselves. They, they synchronize their own database and then they forward it to other neighbors. The one which is sent by A is now sent by B. After some time, C also sends the same update to A because it received from B. A, B. So there is going to be a duplication of update with different neighbors information as the sender. This causes loop. That is why we need a designated router. So we will send anything that we want to send to everyone. We will send only to the DR. And when DR speaks, others only can listen. When others speak, only DR can listen. Listen. <laughs> Let me tell you again. When others speak, others should not receive. Others should not hear. Only DR should hear. And when DR speaks, all others will hear. That's also a problem. Which means other other cannot talk. Other can talk only to DR. Because I say it when others speak, only DR can hear. But when DR speak, all can hear. When DR speak, all can hear. How is that possible? This is the address. DR will notify, will, will send using 224.0.0.5. And others will use to send 224.0.0.6. If this is sent by using 224.0.0.6, what does that mean? 
dears receive if anyone sends to this address. Six. And A, B, everyone receives if someone is sending to 224-005 because he is sending to 5. This can receive, this can receive, this can receive. And if someone wants to notify something to DR, they use six. Who can receive? Yes, uh, question again. If router A send an update to 224.006, who can only receive? It's only DR. Only DR because he's the listening router for this address 224.006, he only can receive. So that solves the problem. There is no now duplication of update. When DR sends, everyone receives. They don't send back to DR because they receive from DR. So there's no duplication. And other other they, they cannot talk because they whenever they, they speak, only person that they can uh, speak is, to which they can speak is the TR router. It's only to the DR they all can speak. There is no other router able to hear them because the sending address that they used to speak is 224.006. Right, these two addresses are very important to avoid loop, to avoid duplication. With one address, it's not possible. That's why in multi-axis, we need these two addresses. Any question on this two address? No, that's all good so far. So it means like uh, whenever any message, okay, with DR only have the new machine, with full latency machine with other DR address. Yeah, that's the other interpretation of this, correct? And A and B, like DR others, they have only up, up to two way relationships. Correct. So whenever A speaks to this address 224.006, only a DR can hear, which means only DR can have full relationship with A. No one else. Only, only DR can have full relationship with B. Because only B and A, sorry, only B and DR can talk each other if B is sending to 224.006. Others cannot hear. So others don't don't have full relationship. They don't learn. They only learn from DR. So everyone has got full relationship with DR. Uh, but between the other routers, it's only two way. Well said, that is correct. That is achieved through this address. This address is also one of the important um, parameter that contributes to what you said. That's right. Now there are a range, there is a range of sequence number. Every time a new update is sent, the sequence number is incremented by one. So LS says when they are sent, they are sent along with sequence number. And the receiving router will maintain the LSA's sequence number in LSDB, links to database. The sequence number is a four byte number, 32 bit, four byte, but represented in the hexadecimal format. If it is hexadecimal format, how many digits you will see? 32 bit, if you are writing in hexadecimal, how many how many hexabits you will see? Uh, we will see 
three, four is it like F F F or is sixteen? See, I repeat. We have thirty-two. Oh, it should be eight. Yes, eight. Sorry, eight, eight number. Correct. Eight hexa bits. Eight hexa digits. Yep. So because you know four bit of uh, binary is one bit of hexa. Four bit of binary is one bit of hexa. Four bit of binary is one bit of hexa. Four bit of binary is one bit of hexa. Four bit of binary is one bit of hexa. Four bit of binary is one bit of hexa. So how many you see? Uh, totally eight. That is why you see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Zero X, what does this mean? This means it's hexa. Hexa, that's how we, we write zero X means, you know, the number followed by zero X is a hexa digit number. It's not decimal. Now, sequence number scheme is four byte that begins with zero X. Eight. Zero, 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 one. And ends with zero, X, seven. F, 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 F. You may think like, what? How is that possible? Beginning with eight, ending with seven? Actually, when it begins with eight and when all the zeros become F, see, that never happens. Uh, because there is a refresh of one hour, every one hour they, they, they age out and then they reset again. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is, uh, in case if there's a very big millions of root exchanging router and all millions of routes are fluctuating, then there will be too many updates. In that case, the sequence number will increase very fast. And if it reaches that 6 million or whatever, say 32 power 2. 32 power, 32 raised to 2. That many updates, let's say, from a particular network. Not possible. If that happens for a network, then all the zero will turn F. When all turn F, they automatically reset to seven F F F F F F F not eight F F F F F. They reset to seven F F F F F so that the next number will be eight zero 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 so that they can begin in the algorithm they can begin from zero X eight zero 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 one. <clears throat> See, just to explain us how the reset happens, how it begins from this number, they're, they're just writing it here. This is how the algorithm does actually. When all this becomes F, it immediately turns this to 7 and F. So that the algorithm can begin from 8. What is the next number of this one? 0x8. Zero if this is the initial value, then the first update will be 1. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So this is the, this may be slightly confusing, but uh, if you if you see from the algorithm's perspective, you'll, you'll agree. If algorithm needs to restart with 0x8000, zero 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 zero, then this is what need to be done so that it can come in round robin. Now, we all learned earlier that every 30 minutes, 
there is an update periodically sent. OSP floods each LSA every 30 minutes to maintain a proper database synchronization. Each time the flood, each time LSA is flooded, the sequence number is incremented by one. See if there is no change at all, but still, you know, in 30 minutes it's going to flood even if there is no change. So there will be an increment in sequence number at least one time. Ultimately, when LSA sequence number will wrap around this one, which will occur, the existing LSA is permanently aged to maximum age one hour and flushed. See, that's very important. I told you uh, it's two to the power of 32 sequence number for each network. That will not age out. That will not, uh, sorry, that will not uh, be fully utilized actually. Only because of age out, it will get resetted and start from the beginning. That is what here it means. So every changes, only one number will be incremented. If there is no change, at least every 30 minutes, there is going to be flooding. So there will be definitely some incrementation. When it reaches one hour, the reset happens. So that it never goes to the maximum. So that the sequence number will not run out. The reason for reset every one hour is the sequence number should not run out. If you just leave it for ages without resetting, even though it is 32 bit in a large network, there are chances of running out of sequence number. So OSPF is designed uh, by keeping all this in mind a long run. What if there's a big internet, the entire world is in one single network and definitely there will be change everywhere, here and there, every now and then. And this should never age out, sorry, uh, run out. So they, they made this aging out system. Every one hour it will age out and get reset to the beginning number, sequence number. When each, when, when a router encounters two instances of uh, an LSA, it must determine which is recent by comparing the sequence number. Newer the sequence number, more recent the update is. So it's by the sequence number. Here is an example. If you see 192.168.1.67 is one of the link ID advertised by the router. Here, unfortunately, the same router ID. And about this link, this router has advertised before 48 seconds. And there was the eighth update about this link from this router. See, this and this will always not be same. In, in this example, the router that advertises has got the same router ID, which the link also has got. Address on the link. This is the router which advertises that. Eight seconds ago, the update was given. There was the eighth update, 48 seconds ago. Right, so here we see another one, 192.168.2.130 was advertised 212 seconds ago. It was the sixth update. So every OSP router announces the router LSAs for those interfaces that it owns in that area. What is router LSA? Type 1 LSA. We will talk, we have spoken about it. We'll talk again when we go there. The type 1 LSA is announced uh, by each OSPF router, every OSPF router. 
for that interface that are in that area. So you know very well about type one illustrators within that area. Don't go out. Router with a link. Hmm. I forgot one thing. Like the link ID. The link ID is the ID of the interface of the advertisement router, right? Correct. The link ID is the IP address on the link itself. Uh, from where the updates are originating but the router ID is the one which is under ADV advertised router so if your uh, router has got a Lubeck interface then you will you will see here the Lubeck interface of the router like 1.1.1.1 and the link ID is this but here we we don't see any other address and this is just a sample taken so they did not plan well here the advertised routers address as well as the link id about which this update is coming uh, is the same so the router with the link 192.168.1.67 has been updated 80 So eight times, this is the number here, eight times. Eight times, uh, the last update was 48 seconds ago. That's the meaning of this. If the daily router has like three serial interface, then which link can it use? What? No, 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 link ID is, for every link it will be separate address. It's not link ID. There is no common link ID. <laughs> See, listen. Mm -hmm. oh, you're confused. You're, you, what do you say now is, this is one serial link. This is one serial link. This is one serial link. This is what you said, right? I'm sorry, your voice is breaking. Yes, it's correct. Okay. Now, yes. when this router advertise, let's say the router advertisement is going from this router and the router ID of this router is 1.1.1.1 and the IP address on this router on this link is 10.0.0.1 this is 20.0.0.1 and this is 30.0.0.1 now when the advertisement goes in this direction to this router this router will see the advertisement coming from 10.0.0.1 that's the link ID and advertising router is 1.1.1.1. When this same update goes in this direction, in this direction, the router here, we learn that this is about the link ID 10.0.0.1. It will not show 20.0.0.1. It will say, because it is about this S0 link. 10.0.0.1 advertising router is 1.1.1.1. And when this S1 sends an update, it will be 20.0.0.1 as the link ID. And the advertising router is the same, 1.1.1.1. So for each link, the IP address on the port is considered as the link ID. But the advertising router is the same same router with multiple links now this command i think i showed you i'll also show you again when we do the lab uh, debug ipospf packet this will show you all type of packets hello packets mm -hmm. lsu lsa uh, acknowledgement dbd how do i know whether this packet is an uh, LS uh, um, type, um, sorry, um, how do I know whether it's a hello packet or uh, LSR or LSU or DBD by seeing this number? If you see T type as one, which means it's a hello packet, instead of one, if you see two there, it is DBD. If it is three, 
So LSR, link state request. If it is four, it's LSU. If it is five, it's LS acknowledgement. So this command is common to see all OSPF message types, debug IP OSPF packet. Usually we don't use debugs in production if uh, the protocol sends hello very often and there is too many changes in the network because it's going to consume the buffer of the router the router will not have sufficient buffer enough space for the routing process so we avoid using debug but if you know that this protocol is not going to have much debug it won't uh, block the buffer you may do it with a caution mm, again Using Wireshark is more better, I recommend that. You can use Wireshark, in Wireshark it clearly shows in an easy way to understand. This you may not sometime understand, uh, we understand because we have learned, but not everyone will understand this, but everyone can understand a, a Wireshark capture. I know it's a received packet at this particular time from OSPF, and this is the version, this is the t this is the type, this is the length of the packet, this is the router ID of the packet, OSPF or area ID is the checksum value for integrity. There's no authentication, it is coming from this interface. All right, so this chapter was giving you uh, in deep of uh, deep dive of uh, adjacency the hello packets the packet types in ospf uh, the sequence number the multicast addresses in ospf again i want to say this one anything that we want to send it to the signator router to dr it needs to be sent to 24006 uh, when a dr sends the update to others it will use 24005 Every 30 minutes, the mm. flooding of LSS happens uh, so that all router will be in sync. Not only that, every one hour, the max age reaches for every single LSS, and the sequence number gets reset to the beginning. Whenever any change happens on a link, the sequence number is incremented and the change is sent. The receiving router compares the sequence number when they receive the packet, when they, when they receive the update. And uh, if the incoming is n n having the highest sequence number, then that is the latest, that's the recent. We even saw this thing in the flowchart, uh, first chapter of the last page. Well, let's move on to the next list. Configuring OSPF routing. See, OSPF needs a process ID. Why? You may need some time to run more than one OSPF. Why? Because I don't want the route coming from one interface to go out on the other interface. I don't like this. I want to run OSPF in this side. A big network is there. I have another big network here. So, but I do not want the route coming from this right-hand side network to go to left-hand side network. Say I run OSPF on both left and right, left and right, right and left. It's only the OSPF I'm running. But still, I do not want, for some reason, I do not want right and left to get synchronized. But I want the same protocol OSPF. Then what I do, I, I run two OSPF, process ID one, which will be running on this port, process ID two will be running on this port. 
It's two different OSPF. They don't talk. They don't, they don't share anything. Even though they are the same router, the protocol is same, the process ID is not the same. The process ID is different. So now we understand here the reason why we need process ID to, to differentiate one OSPF from other on the same router. You need process ID. We need process ID. Without process ID, you cannot achieve this. Having same routing protocol on same router, without process ID, it's not possible. They're going to distribute the routes coming from right to left if you don't have different process ID. Okay, so even you may do a lot of filter list, but it's it's not going to be that uh, convenient as you enable another OSPF process ID. So use different OSPF process ID in this type of scenarios. Use more than one OSPF means you need to use more than one process ID. So there is also something called VRF, which we learn later when we reach MPLS, virtual route forwarding. That is also another reason why you need more process IDs, more, more than one OSPF on same router. VRF is another control plane that you create. You already have a control plane. You already have a routing table. When you create another routing table, what does that mean? You create another control plane. So you cannot have same same routing protocol for multiple control planes. Each control plane needs separate controller, separate routing protocol. So we can use the process IDs to differentiate the default VRF OSPF and the customer VRF OSPF. So process ID is important whenever you want to run more than one via one more than one uh, OSPF. That's the uh, that's the summary of the story. You need process ID. You need process ID. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. As of now, we no need, but I will, I'll repeat one more time in short. VRF, if I need to put it in a very simple way, VRF is creating another router inside a router. You are creating another virtual router inside a router. That is what I said in another technical term. You are creating another control plane. Actually, what is controlling a router? Routing table. When you, when you can create another routing table, what does that mean? You are creating another router. In same physical router, you will have two routers. So you cannot have same routing protocol for two routers. Not possible, no? So you need another routing protocol. So how you will get another OSPF? By having different process ID. So each router should have because it's the same physical router, you need to give different number. Again, I'm telling you, the, the process ID is locally to locally significant to the router. It is not like an EIGRP autonomous system number. In EIGRP, if two routers need to form neighbor, the autonomous system number must match on this two route. But what we are learning is not autonomous system number. It's a process ID. The process ID on one router and the process ID on another router can be can be different or can be same. That doesn't matter. Only based on the area ID, they decide to form neighbor. But when you have one physical router with multiple virtual routers, multiple virtual routers, and if all these routers need to run OSPF, then you need to provide different process ID to say this OSPF belong to this physical router. This OSPF belong to uh, the virtual router on the same physical router. 
that's that's the reason why we need process ID. So in simple, you need you need more than one OSPF. You need to differentiate by giving different process ID. Next, once you are inside the OSPF mode, the router mode, you need to specify the network by using the network command and the wildcard mask and to which area the link that has got this this network the area to which this link is given this is the syntax you must type the network command followed by the network on the link and the a and the and the wildcard mask followed by the area id with all this only it will accept this line otherwise it will reject the same complete command wildcard mask is like applying zeros on those bits that you want to match that you want to match for example if i want to match 10.1.0.0 if i want to match up to the 16 bit then i need to put zeros for the 16 bit and the rest i'll put 255 or 255 this is what we call it as wildcard mask you can also say in the name and term it's opposite of subnet mask now if you feel difficult to type all these things, ah, what is this wildcard mask? I don't like. Then you have another option. Easy. You no need to worry about wildcard mask. It's, an, it's, it's another option. Either this or this you do. You can go straight to the interface where you want to run OSPF and say this OSPF, sorry, this interface belong to this process ID. And, uh, and this interface and the network on the interface will be a member of so-and-so area. This will be the easy way. Directly going to the interface and say whatever the network on the interface that uh, I don't know, but I don't, I, I, I want this to be in OSPF one process ID area zero. So if you see here, if you see here, or straight on the interface, you go say IP OSP 50 area 1. In this. But for this interface, what you have done is you have gone to the classical method, router OSP 50, 10.6402, and you are saying all four octets should match. That's why you, you say 0, 0, 0, 0, 4. All 32 bits should be matched. It's, it's a member of area zero. All right, so we, we see here in same router, both the methods are used. One is the optional method under the interface, which uh, we always, I always prefer. And the other one is the classical method where you go under the interface and advertise a prefix you can mix like this or you can follow any one of this and here they say in this example they have followed the classical method right Right, so how is the router ID elected? See, if you if you want to give a router ID manually, you use the command router ID to do that. Simple router ID command. If you don't specify a manual router ID, then it is going to use the address on the loopback interface. If you don't have 
this booth. So your first preference is for the router ID command. The second preference is for the Lubeck. If you don't have both, then it is going to take the IP address from the physical interface. It will take the IP address from the physical interface. Again, this interface should be an active interfaces. Let's read from the beginning. The router is known to OSPF by the router ID, of course, yes. Every router will use the router ID to tell about themselves to others. LSDB uses the OSPF router ID to differentiate one router from the, other, from the next. By default, the router ID is highest IP address on the active interface at the moment the OSPF process starts. Very important. When the OSPF is enabled, when it is starting, it will it will use the IP address, the highest IP address from that active interfaces. Now, which interface? I have Lubeck interface, I have physical interface, active. Which one it is going to take? It is going to take the Lubeck interface address. Lubeck interface can override the OSPF. Router ID if the Lubeck interface exists. The router ID is the highest IP address on the um, that is there found on the active Lubeck interface. Now, if I don't have Lubeck interface, only then it will compare the highest IP address on the physical interface and take that as the router ID. Now, before the OSPF adjacency happens if you wish to provide a router id you can give by your own a router id by giving this command router i if an id so this is the command that we use to provide the router id but if router id is already taken from an interface you need to clear the process after you assign this router id Clearing the process is restarting the OSPF again. Only then the new address will be taken. Otherwise, this command is taken, but it won't be using it. The router won't be using it unless you restart the OSPF process. Okay. So, what if I have more than one Lubeck interface? When I enable when I enable OSPF, <coughs> it is going to pick the highest IP address. That's what very important. Highest IP address. If I have many physical interface, sorry, many Lubeck interface, it compares the IP address on all the Lubeck interface and picks the one with the highest. In OSPF, you should not get confused. In OSPF, bigger number is highest. The priority also big number. The router ID also the big address. It's the big number. Okay, so even if you are not advertising the network, let's say you have a Lubeck address but you have not advertised it in OSPF no problem because this is bigger than this even though it is not in the routing table even though it is not uh, anywhere on the um, even though it is not in the OSPF database even though it is not a pingable address still it is going to be a router ID if it is bigger. So let me repeat again. Let's say you got a two Lubeck interface. This is Lubeck 1 and this is Lubeck 0. Lubeck 0 has got small address, but that address is advertised in OSPF. It is pingable. Will, it, will OSPF prefer this as a router ID? No. Even though this is not in the OSPF table, even though it is not advertised, even though it is not a pingable one, because the router 
ID is just a name, that doesn't matter. It need not to be a pingable address. It will use this address. So to verify what router ID or router ID the router is using, there are there are two commands. You can say show IP OSPF, which will show you the ID. You can also type show IP protocol. There you will see uh, under OSPF this one. There you will see under the OSPF uh, the the router ID. I think they will have some output here. Yes, yeah, see, should no, not this one. No, there is no output here. So, um, so this is one of the command. Next is um, show IP protocol. Show IP route OSPF. In the routing table, if you want to see only the OSPF routes, you can say this. If you have multiple OSPF, then you can also say OSPF process ID 1, OSPF process ID 2. So it will show only those routes learned from OSPF process ID 1. Show IP OSPF interfaces. It will, I used to type show IP OSPF interface brief command that will show in a nice table form. If you don't use the brief command, it will be too big like this show IP OSPF interface and it will be big like this. If you have many interfaces, then it will go pages. I always use the brief command, show IP OSPF interface, brief. Okay, show IP OSPF neighbor, show IP OSPF, neighbor shows whether it is full adjacent or two-way. Neighbor detail will also give you the same information in, uh, in this manner. Right, this chapter was about configuring OSPF. You have two ways, one the classical way under the router OSPF mode. The other one is under the interface mode. Yeah. Router ID election. If you have a router ID to configure, you use the router ID command to configure it. But when you configure, if already OSPF is using another address as a router ID, you may need to clear it by saying clear IP OSPF process. That will restart the OSPF process. It will kill the early the previous OSPF and restart. It is going to be disruptive. So you should not use it in the production if uh, if everything is going cool already with the old router ID, just for changing the router ID, you cannot kill the OSPF process and disturb the network. So if you don't want to give manually a router ID, it's going to pick the highest IP address from the Lubeck interface. If there is no Lubeck interface, then the highest IP address from the physical, physical interface. Right, so we'll...